The one big advantage of data virtualization is you can go to one source and get all your data needs, but you don't physically have to move the data there. In SQL Server 2019, this is accomplished through Polybase. The use of an external table, and that external table can point to other SQL servers. It can point to Oracle, Hadoop, MongoDB, but it allows you to not actually have to have an extract, transform, load, ETL job to move that data, but you can still report on the data. You can join uh, the two different uh, data sources, one locally, one remote. So some great advantages to data virtualization. Let me show you how it's done. You're going to want to make sure that you've installed SQL Server 2019. That's your first step. And when you do that, you're going to get this feature selection screen. Make sure you pick the Polybase query service for external data. Make sure that option is picked. A couple other things you want to remember. Once that's all installed, you're going to need to go into SQL Server Configuration Manager or Computer Management and get to SQL Server Network Configuration. Turn the TCP IP here. Turn that on by just right clicking and saying enabled. You're going to want to make sure that's enabled. Then you'll need to restart your SQL Server service. So you've installed SQL Server 2019. You need to enable this uh, TCP IP protocol either in SQL Server Configuration Manager or Computer Management. Next, um, go to your services and look down at the bottom, uh, not bottom, search uh, for the string SQL and you'll get down to this section. You're gonna wanna make sure that SQL Server Polybase Data Movement and SQL Server Polybase Engine are both uh, enabled and running. That's what bit me the first time when I was doing this. So make sure those are running. Also, you're gonna wanna uh, make sure that you install Azure Data Studio. I'll provide links for this. And then once you're in Azure Data Studio, you do this, if, if you've been doing DB stuff for a while, this will probably be um, obvious, but uh, type in, you connect to your instance of SQL Server and you need to run the SP configure. And then you're gonna enable a couple things. By default, the Polybase and, uh, and the export Polybase is not turned on at the value the runtime value is zero <clears throat> you need to change what's called the config value to one so you do that through this set of scripts here do that then you can run sp configure again and you're going to see the values that are all that they're switched over to one lastly you're going to want to make sure that in azure data studio once you've run that click the extensions uh, icon here on the left and make sure, it goes, go search up here for SQL Server 2019, install this. What you do is, uh, this this says uninstall now because it's already installed. You install the, I think it's a VSIX file. Now, once you've installed that VSIX file, you go to Azure Data Studio, click file, and then say install extension from VSIX package. All right, so this isn't gonna be a thorough uh, tutorial on Azure Data Studio but make sure you go to your connections here. And this is my default, my local instance here that I've installed on my laptop. When you double click on that, that's gonna bring up a couple tabs that were part of that SQL Server 2019 extension that we loaded. So we're gonna create an external table. You can do that one of two ways. If you click this tab that opened up automatically, once you double clicked on your 2019 instance, you'll get this create external table option or I created a database here. I'm just gonna right click on it and click the create external table option. Okay, pick SQL Server, which will be the default. I'm gonna click next. All right, now you're prompted for a few values here. Okay, let me explain these different uh, values that you need to provide. This one can be, this is brand new. You can call it anything you want. We're gonna call this Azure SQL since we're pointing to an Azure SQL database in Azure. Server name, now this one is gonna be the name of your actual server. Uh, in this situation, it, it's Azure SQL Database. And let me paste that value in there. So the database.windows.net is common, and then you're just gonna type in the prefix here of the name of your actual database. Um, you don't need to put the database name here. This is the name of the server. It's not really, when, you, when you're dealing with Azure SQL Database, 
Uh, that's platform as a service. It's not really a physical server. It's a logical way to contain different databases. So the database name we'll pick later through the, the, uh, the wizard here. So now we're going to configure a credential. This is uh, a new credential. We're creating a new, what's called a database scoped credential. And let's just call it anything. Uh, we're going to call it um, external demo um, user. Now that can be anything. Now this one has to be a username that actually has authority. So in my situation, it's called admin login. I say authority, I mean authority obviously to uh, uh, like SA authority, system administrator authority, or equivalent uh, in Azure SQL database. So let's click next. Now it'll bring up, here's my database. If I had more than one database there, it would list that. Let's open up tables and I'm going to pick my contacts table by clicking that. So I've clicked on it. Let me pick it. Now this is where you can map. This is the source table. Once again, I'm going from a local SQL Server instance on my laptop and I'm creating an external table that points out to an Azure SQL database in Azure Cloud. So um, I'm just going to leave the default uh, names here, click next, and I just click the create button. So there it is here. If you look over here, you see under my uh, Kirby test database, here's a table. You can tell that it's an external table with a little uh, parenthetical um, description here. Let's right click on that, say select top 1000 rows. We'll let that finish. There it is. There's a select statement and here's the data. So just to summarize, we've um, installed SQL Server 2019 locally on, on my laptop. We've used Polybase to create an external table that leaves the data up in Azure SQL database where my data is, but I can now get to it, manipulate it, query it, join on it uh, from my local SQL instance without actually moving the data. Thanks a lot for watching.